Hello everybody, Bubble Zest here, and this is Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video, we're going to be playing a Xinjiang, attempting to answer the question of What's the point of cooperation with the Communists? So, let's get started. Let's secure internal politics, go up to speed 5, and begin! Immediately as well, we're going to join the common turn. It's just a sensible move. So, first we're going to hire ourselves the army offence expert, and begin to justify on the Saibi Sanma. We're not going to do another focus for a moment, we need more political power. Now that we have 5 XP, let's make a new template. Recruit and deploy, division designer, create empty, mobile battalions, cavalry, save. Let's change our three divisions over to that. There we go. And now let's train up 21 of these divisions. Yep, the plan to get both of these warlords is just to overwhelm them with numbers. 73 political power, let's justify on shang -Zi. Now that we have 10 political power, we can continue doing our focuses. Industrial investment. And public education reform. Want that third research slot as soon as possible. And of course, we may as well go for local arms production while we're here. I know we don't normally go for flex org first, but it's actually going to be quite useful. The faster our units can march, the faster we get this done. Alright, justification is ready. Let's go. This should not be hard at all. All we have to do is run around the Zaibi Sanmar's units and go for the victory points. Anyway, that's local arms production done. Let's finally do Coop of Communists. I know we could do the rest of this little industry tree, but we really don't need to do it. There we go, we've got all their victory points, but still not enough to capitulate them, so we have to go tile grabbing. My favourite. There we go. Let's just take the lot. And now let's prepare to take down shang -Zi. This will be a little harder, but shouldn't be too bad. From here, we're going to go into public works. So, we're going to do labour reform, then rural militias. I want the extra output first. Right, justification's ready. Let's declare. I have my units away from shang border so that they'll break their entrenchment. We can't realistically beat them with just two whips, you know. There we go. Looks like they fell for it. So, let's make a full front line. Head into shang -Zi and cool in everyone. Let's go. Right, we have to capitulate shang -Zi before Japan shows up. If Japan declares on them, they will join the Chinese United Front. But the other most important thing is that we actually need enough war score to take all of them. Looks like we have to do tile grabbing again. There we go. And we have more than enough war score to take the lot. Anyway, war economy. Should have done that ages ago. And with that, we finally have enough civs to create an intelligence agency. And Japan declares on China. Luckily, they get no war goal on us. So, we're safe. Anyway, time to choose a doctrine. And there's only one for us today, and it's Grand Battle Plan. Now that we have Labour Reform and Rural Militias, we can finally continue down the focus tree. Let's do Land Redistribution. Okay, now we have two branches to do. Let's do the right one first, because it gives us land value tax. Then we'll do Communist Administrators, which removes our other annoying national spirit in effective bureaucracy. Alright, this next one should be familiar to any of you who have been watching my channel for a long time. We are now building a supply hub right here. But as you can see, the supply hub will take a long time. So, let's activate reorganise the railway system. This supply hub has to be done before we go after Japan, otherwise supply here will just be a nightmare. 
But seriously, Chang blows up this river too often. It's going to be a nightmare to fight here now. Look at that. Extreme flooding. Okay, that's the right side of this tree done. Now let's do the left. Ideological education and judiciary reforms. Can't wait to get rid of government corruption. It's an annoying little spirit. Well, well. Time to join the Chinese Soviet, I think. Which doesn't do too much for us, we are already communist. Although it does make me realise that our communist party is actually called the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Not the Communist Party of China. Anyway, time to bring this army up to shape. We are going to transform these 12 divisions over to our infantry division. I've already changed it over to be this little template. It isn't the greatest, but it will do. And here we go, the Yan incident. When this is done, we will become Communist China and join the war. Very well, let's jump onto the Japanese front line. Chang hasn't been holding too well, but I guess he's held well enough. With 10 odd days to go, it's time to leave the common turn. It has to be done. But I may as well grab non-aggression packs and mill access from the common turn. And here we are. Communist China submits. And now we get a brand new focus tree. The Communist China tree. Right, let's do the Yan base area. And funnily enough, we actually inherit all of Mao's army. And a load of extra equipment and manpower. Right, let's just get on the front line and try and hold down as well as we can. And yes, we are going to join the Chuff. But since we are at war, it's time for my favourite thing. Lend-Lease. I've been improving relations with Hungary and Italy for Lend-Lease. I haven't bothered with Germany. I know they don't have much right now. But luckily, these guys do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, the Ting family have some very talented twins, don't they? One of them is a brilliant strategist, one of them is inflexible. Well, that's just plain unlucky. Strikes already. And Japan is beginning to push us. We will probably lose a tile or two, but that's okay. Okay. Oh, this is just not my day. Since we now have a good amount of Lendleys coming in, let's change Mao's old divisions over to the same template. I was going to do focus on China, but it looks like strengthening the central secretariat is the right move right now. Looks like I'm going to have to switch to Static Warfare. Very well. Sometimes you just have to do that. But god damn people. God damn. Well, it looks like we've managed to hold down. Losses? Eh, okay. Not great. Not terrible. Okay, now we will focus on China. I think we probably could have actually done this regardless, but oh well. Now we must do the Revolutionary Military Commission. Now, originally I didn't improve relations with Germany because I knew they didn't have any lend to give. But now that they annexed Czechoslovakia, I can do this. Thank you very much. Hmm. People's Liberation Army, Mobile Warfare. People's Liberation Army, Mobile Warfare, Mobile Warfare. Okay, okay, now we'll do People's Liberation Army. I'm gonna try and get an encirclement on this. And we're almost there, just need to get one more tile. There we go. So, now we have an important choice to make. Marxist orthodoxy, agrarian socialism, or social democracy? Well, in my opinion, there's only one for us. Social democracy. 
Is it time to do the Chinese power struggle? Of course it is. So, let's expand to Sichuan and this other state that I'm not going to butcher. In the meanwhile, we're going to purge the radicals. We could try and get support from Yan'an and the Guangxi clique, but I'm kind of hoping to not need to. If we get very lucky, these will be the only states we need to expand in. Yes, very, very lucky. Because immediately we can take national leadership. Very nice. And here comes the fun part. The part where we reorganise this whole army. Wow, Chang did not have many divisions. Oh well, now it's my problem. Frontline, and time for the Great Shuffle. And there you go, the Radicals have been purged. So, let's do the Socialist Market Economy to remove the Long March. Even though we had nothing to do with that in this timeline. It's a small encirclement, but it's the first sign of progress all day. What, though, has happened to my trains? Apparently I have enough trains, but the game doesn't think so. Zhang Bei is ours. Although I can tell that that unit is trying to move in. The focus is at this point it really doesn't matter, we'll just do things that are useful. Like, I don't know, Central Security Bureau. But it looks like we finally got somewhere, which is welcome. It is now true to say that this line is very weak, but there is a reason for that. If we look south, Japan took Vietnam. Oh well. Li Zhongren and Long Yun, it's your problem now. But I've got a thing on the positives. This line is weak, so we can make encirclements. And we've just linked up the supply hub in Zhang Bei, so supply up here should be a little better. Well, there we go. That's our biggest encirclement so far. Hey, I know it ain't much, but we needed that. Japan's doing a line shuffle. Right, there's no better time than to attack, in my opinion. Let's break their cipher and activate the 100 Regiments Offensive. With this, we have 50 plus attack on core territory. And that's why Japan has been line shuffling. They're going after the Allies. Not that I'm complaining, that's relieving a lot of stress on my front. The first false state has been destroyed. Good, Hishing is now ours. Better link that too. But good, good, we've managed to reclaim Nanjing and its supply hub. And Mukden, where this all started, is back under Chinese control. At this point, our next goal is to break into Korea. And Cypher again. Let's go. We still have 74 days on the regiment's offensive left, so we better use it. And down goes the second false state. To get peace, we are definitely going to have to take Hainan back. So let's send a detachment down to deal with it. The operation to reclaim Hainan is underway and should not take long at all, even breaking over this strait. With the final days of the 100 Regiments Offensive underway, we should be able to reclaim it. Right, I've now got transport ships because it seems the only way we're going to get onto this island is via a naval invasion. So, let's get to work again. Problem is, naval supremacy. My only hope is the Allies, so you know, not very confident. Come on Soviets, what's the cheapest destroyer you have? Yeah, that'll probably do. 
I know, not the best idea, but I need something to get more supremacy. Okay, this is probably our best chance. Break Cypher, Force Attack, come on. Yes, we broke it. And they reinforced it, because of course they could. Japan is doing the ultimate reinforced meme on us. We'll push out one unit, then another one will just come back. Finally, naval invasion going. Best chance now. Cypher is breaking, let's go. There. Thank you. Japan offers peace. Thanks, Toy 4. For any of you who are interested, here are our final casualties. We dealt the most casualties. We took a lot, but less than a million is actually quite good. The war has been won. Right, let's finish up what we started. Kick out Guangzi clique, justify, reclaim core state, 80 days. I swear, if any of the allies guarantee Guangzi or Yunnan, I'm going to order 66 them. I swear to god. Right Guangzi, you've lived long enough. Although it does remove the Soviet tribute. So I guess I better talk about it before it's gone. The Soviet tribute is meant to be a downside because of the Yan incident. The thing is, one, the Soviets rarely ever trade with you, and two, you're not the Soviet puppet, so most of the extra trade to overlord stuff doesn't even apply. So yeah, this is annoying, but it doesn't matter. And at any time, you can refuse to pay the tribute, which will give the Soviets a war goal on you, but the Soviets rarely use this war goal anyway. And you can just join the common turn if you really want to. Anyway, let's go. Since Guangxi is Chinese territory, we get all the benefits of focus on China and everything else. And that's it for the clique. But because of how long the war lasted, we actually got some additional bonuses. One, they actually hold Guangzhou one. And two, they hold Tongqing and Laos. Let's see what we can't make of this. We got six states and two new puppets. Laos and Vietnam. Hey there, Ho Chi Minh. Anyway, just one more problem to deal with. 80 days and not much more. Right, one more and no more to unify China. This time, Yanan, there'll be no reinforced memes. You're not Japan, you're not even close. Well, Yanan is down, but... Now Starling got some ideas. Well, I don't have time in this video to fight a fool of them, but I probably can. Eventually we could even form Turkestan with that. So, to answer the question of what's the point of co-op with communists? Well, it's fine, but the problem of co-op with communists is a bit of a weird one. Like, for Xinjiang, it works very, very well. But that's because Xinjiang starts as communist. For any other warlord who starts with non-aligned, I don't think it's worth it. Because joining the Chinese Soviet requires 40% communist support. That can take a long time to get up. In the meanwhile, you could just do things like power struggle or proclaiming a rival government. In my opinion, co-op with the communists is only really viable in one country, and it's relatively easy on that country. But it's fun-ish alright with that country. And as long as you don't um, mess up the Soviet tribute like I did, you will have a fine campaign. Fine. In hindsight, what I should have just done was kept the tribute until I declared on Guangxi or Yan'an. But I think I accidentally pressed the refuse button a few years too early, and the Soviets broke the non-aggression pack and declared war on me. Oh well. 
Until next time, everybody, I thank you for watching, do hope you've enjoyed it, and until we meet again, from me, Bubble Zest, good bye. Oh yeah, before I forget, my capital is still Yumkey. So my capital is hundreds of miles away from the majority of China's population right now. Quick addendum though, did manage to do it. So, Turkestan. You know the funny thing? If you did this and actually formed the PRC, you technically get a double formable nation. That's quite rare to get in Hoi 4.